This news update is brought to you by... Say hello to Shanta. Shanta is an entertainer, but she also loves to be entertained, which is why she has Flow TV brought to her through Flow's 100% Fiber to the Home Network. It's great for busy Shanta because she can control the time she watches her favorite shows, playback from the start in case she missed it, or even record with cloud video recording. And with her Flow Services bundle, enjoys much more for much less. Visit any Flow retail outlet. Call 1-800-804-2994 or visit discoverflow.co to find out more. One of a kind connection. This is how we flow. It's Monday, April 4, and time for the Barbados Today morning update. Thanks for joining us. I am Fernella Wedderburn. Not surprising, but unfortunate. That's how noted economist Jeremy Stephen describes the country's recent downgrade by Moody's Investors Service. Over the weekend, the International Rating Agency changed its outlook for Barbados to stable on the basis that it continues to record low-level foreign exchange reserves as well as slow progress towards achieving fiscal consolidation. It is expected, it was expected that we would have downgrades. It is expected that if we follow the current path that there will be pressure on the exchange rate, especially given that we haven't done much to, to reverse the slight downward trend in our foreign reserves. And given the, the whole threat of correspondent banking de-risking, that is, or the banks that we transact, that we get U.S. dollars from for overseas transactions, that they, they, they are not actually looking to do as much business with us as a region as we did before. Uh, we've got a lot of threats that would make this reversal in our credit rate and the downward trend that we have to reverse that, it would make it really more difficult. Uh, in the next two to three to four years, thereabouts. However, Stephen says the rating does not pose a problem for the country in the medium term, but serves as a wake-up call for authorities. It is a call for policymakers to recognize that the pace of improvement is necessary if we want to continue attaining funding from sources that we are accustomed to uh, attaining funding from. So the same um, if we like banks like the HSBCs of the world, the city banks, uh, larger investors like pension funds, uh, investors in real estate that very well depend very heavily on debt ratings to make their decisions amongst other perennials that I'm quite sure most of us can single out. I would even go further to say that it is a call for us to, to, to find new sources of growth as quickly as possible, uh, especially given the fact that the government is, to its credit to a point, rather reluctant to, send, um, to, to do a very aggressive fiscal consolidation. Albeit since we are so far gone, it's still necessary that we have to close a gap or to focus on very high growth measures going forward. Attorney General Adriel Brafwit says his government is not considering releasing prisoners as part of the nation's 50th anniversary celebrations. He told members of the media last night that the matter has never been discussed by the Frontal Stewart administration at any time. I don't know where this speculation came from about release of, of prisoners um, as part of our 50th anniversary celebration. Um, in fact, we've had no such discussions whatsoever. I did read an article um, where um, Senator David Dewan um, is alleged to have echoed um, such sentiments. Um, David, I understand David's position as, as a man of the cloth and as a man of God. Um, but it's certainly, as I said, certainly not an issue that government has discussed at all. And, and as you know, as Minister of Home Affairs, um, the prison falls under my portfolio. And so I can tell you that we've had no such discussions whatsoever. There is a call for the controversy surrounding the marking of school-based assessment projects to be taken before CARICOM. It comes from a President of the Barbados National Council, of Parent Teachers Associations, Sean Gibbs, who says that the issue has been dragging on for much too long. He made the comments over the weekend as he addressed the BNCPTA's annual general meeting at the St. Michael's School, where he was re-elected for a second term. After a year of can canvassing this matter, having spoken to 
our counterparts in Jamaica, where the Caribbean Union of Teachers is headquarters, and our Trinidad counterparts, this matter have not reached national levels in those countries. So the Barbados situation still remains unique. And I personally feel that because of the, the nature of it, it's something that should be a regional battle um, at the level of CARICOM based on how CXC have been formulated. In other news, fire officials are probing a blaze in Maxwell Christchurch. A two-story house, which was apparently up for sale, was extensively damaged by the blaze yesterday afternoon. Two tenders and eight firemen responded to the blaze around 2 p.m. under the command of Divisional Officer Errol Gaskin. Two sports now and congratulatory messages continue to pour in for West Indies men and women. The regional sides lifted both titles yesterday in style. In the men's game, Bobby and Carlos Braffitt hit the first four balls of the final over for six as the West Indies turned England in Kolkata. West Indies, who were 11 for 3 in pursuit of England's 159 for 9, needed 19 of the final over to win, and they did it in style. Oh boy, it was just a matter of getting back from the ball. Uh -huh. Believe in yourself, unfortunately, it came true. That was Carlos Braffitt speaking to Barbados today via phone from India at his family's home in Christchurch. Now, amidst the celebrations, West Indies T20 captain Darren Sammy launched a scathing attack on the West Indies cricket board. Darren Sammy revealed that the team received little to no support en route to the World Cup in India. He said the team encountered numerous issues and felt disrespected by the board, but prevailed in the face of criticism. Despite this, he declared the win won from, for the Caribbean and thanked CARICOM leaders, especially Grenada's Prime Minister, Dr. Keith Mitchell, for their support. Now, in the women's game, Barbadian Haley Matthews hit a stunning 66 for 45 balls with three sixes in a 120 partnership with Captain Stephanie Taylor. The partnership was enough to help the team post a scintillating eight-wicket win over Australia to clinch their first title with three balls to spare. There's regional and international news after this short break. The 50th anniversary of Independent Secretariat and the National Cultural Foundation proudly present the theatrical production From Bassa to Barrow and Beyond. We are not slaves. Saturday, April 16th at 6.30 p.m. at the historic Golden Grove Plantation. Come, be a witness to history. Aye, Nanny Quig. Enter the ritual. Feel the power. This country will be independent. And if I have to wake up all the sleeping angels in heaven, so be it. From Bossa to Barrow and beyond. April 16th. Tickets $50 adults, $10 youth and children. Available at all NCF outlets and at TicketPal.com. And we pick up with news from the region, Trinidad and Tobago, to be exact, where a 23-year-old becomes the country's first pregnant woman to be diagnosed with the dreaded Zika virus. More in this report from TV6 News. It is uncharted territory where combating microcephaly, a condition inhibiting brain development in the fetus, is concerned in the country. So over the course of what is supposed to be a standard 37-week pregnancy, the 23-year-old Belmont woman who was diagnosed with Zika on March 29th will be closely monitored by doctors after becoming the first national whose baby could be at risk. Health Minister Terence Dialsing says, the protocols which are expected to be crucial during this pregnancy are recognized by the World Health Organization and tailored to suit the country. 
And finally, a leak of 11 million confidential documents from a Panamanian law firm has revealed the extent to which the world's rich and powerful use tax havens to hide their wealth. More in this report from the BBC. An enormous leak of files from this company, Mossack Fonseca, shows the reality of offshore. From outside, Mossack Fonseca looks like a perfectly respectable company. But this is a business that's helped people from around the world break the law. The documents were leaked to the German newspaper Süddeutsche Zeitung and shared with the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists. Panorama has been analysing the documents. We found links to 72 current or former heads of state. And that's news and sports, but for the very latest, visit our website www.populistoday.bb. Also, subscribe to our e-paper, email updates and like us on Facebook. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Channel 99 on Flow TV and the Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Frenella Wedderburn. Good morning.